Now, I think you'll probably agree with me that web browsers are boring. Whether you use Chrome or Firefox or Microsoft Edge, basically you get a window, a bunch of tabs along the top, uh, bookmarks and a couple of menus, and you just open a web page. And the good thing is it works. Long gone are the days of this has to be previewed, viewed with you know, Internet Explorer 6 or something like that, but it just works. But because it's so boring, there's no more innovation. Nothing changes. You really don't care which web browser you're using because it just works. And that's where the browser company comes in. They have released a new browser called Arc, which is for, at the moment, just for the Mac. It's in private beta. However, it's trying to change completely the way that we look at the internet. And today I want to take a look at Arc, tell you all the good things, mention a few bad things, and you can make up your own mind whether you think this really is the future of the internet. Okay, so here we are on the home page of the browser company, and here's their little demonstration of what the problem is. This is a web browser, you know, it's familiar. You've got your back and forward buttons, you've got tabs. Uh, and as you know, that as you open more tabs, it's just a frame with a button and toolbars, as I was saying. It's our window into the internet, but the problem is, is very quickly you can actually get lots and lots of tabs open. In fact, while I was preparing to uh, for this video, making some notes and things, I had 74 tabs open in a uh, Google Chrome and they want to change that. They want to change the way we uh, use web browser. And I'm actually in Arc here. And the way they're doing that now is that actually all of the uh, kind of window tabs that are open are here on the left hand side. And then there's just one tab here at the moment. And that is for the browser company. And so if we open up a new tab, we could just hit that there, new tab. Let's just type in, you know, something simple enough like Wikipedia. Now the thing you notice is everything's full screen now. I've got no back and uh, forward buttons. I've got no uh, type menu bar, I've got nothing. I'm just focused completely on what I'm doing, which is really, really good. It's quite shocking to actually be able to just be Focus completely on the web page that is before you. And so, for example, if we just start going into some random different articles here, we can open them in a new tab. Let's open another new tab here. And now you'll see that these here are being left listed on the left hand side. Now, this sidebar, you can permanently fix it if that's what you want. You don't get that full screen kind of effect then, but you do have access to everything that you want there uh, on the left. But of course, there is this thing called the command uh, bar, which is uh, command and T. And of course, you can always go to the webs that are the tabs that are open from here. So look, so I can just switch to that uh, here without having to go all the way over uh, to the left. So that's really, really quite useful. And the other thing that's really important is it's got this button here called clear. And that will basically get rid of everything that you're not using. Now, let's just say we can move this browser company one up to here, and that's what's called a pinned tab. So I want to keep that open. I don't want that to go away. And then I can hit clear, and it just gets rid of everything. Because so the idea is, is that at any moment when you just tab overload, well, all the stuff that I've been looking, you know, I don't need anymore, hit clear, and it just, it just disappears. In fact, there is a setting to say, do that automatically every 12 hours. Do that automatically every day. Start the day fresh with, with getting rid of all of the tabs. And if it's over in the pinned side, that remains so you don't lose it. Now, when tabs are closed, they don't disappear. So you say, oh no, where's that, that article I was reading on how to eat weird vegetables to make me really healthy? You can go up to the archive, view the archive, and that just shows you all of the different ones. And you can have them all closed, those that were auto-closed, that were those that were manually closed, so that you get you know control over. You don't lose anything, uh, which is the great thing. Now, you may have also noticed here on the left-hand side, here are my back, forward, and refresh buttons. Now, if we go again to, let's say, say a uh, Wikipedia article and we go in here and we go in here now you, rather than going all the way over to here clicking back and forward you can just use command square bracket left square bracket or right square bracket to go backwards and forward so that's really really uh, useful so that you don't have to you can do it with a keyboard shortcut so again just making life uh, really easy. Now you'll have also noticed up here at the top that you can actually have some kind of uh, quick ones that you want to get to all the time. So for example, I've got YouTube open there. And so that's kind of really a quick way to get to sites Gmail, YouTube, things like that that you use all of the time. Here, of course, is the command bar, address bar where you can type in things. And as I said, you can lock it 
permanently or not permanently there. Now, another way that Arc helps to declutter the internet is by giving you workspaces. They just call them spaces. If we go over to the sidebar and you get down to the bottom, you can see there are these different workspaces. I've got one here called Stuff, and it brings up a whole new thing with, you know, different tabs. So you can organize things into, you know, streaming, gaming, news, you know, work stuff, research, you know, whatever. And you can have a different workspace for each one, which again allows you to quickly drill down, get to the tabs that you want to actually use. So again, here we could just use a new tab. Let's go to, you know, GitHub or something like that. That now comes up and you can see it's here, but that's different to the other workspace, which had the Wikipedia page on it. So you can see you can just switch between them, organize your life however you want. So kind of an extra nested layer for those tabs. But they actually won't go one better. I don't know about you, but I have different accounts for personal stuff and different accounts for work stuff. So I have a Gary Explains Twitter account, but I also have a Gary Sims personal Twitter account. Now at the moment I use two web browsers. So one of them I'll open, let's say in uh, Chrome, and the other one I might open in Firefox or in uh, Opera and the way and that allows me to log in separately So I have to have different windows open and I have to go to each one But inside of arc you can have spaces that have different profiles So the next one down here with a little robot on it is my Android Authority Profile and that allows me to log in I could log into Gmail I could log into Twitter I could log into YouTube Using my Android Authority credentials and not having them mixed up and what's in that workspace with that profile remains completely separate So the cookies and all that login stuff remain separate from what are in the other workspaces and you can have multiple profiles You know for work and for you know your local fishing club or whatever it is you do as a hobby and for your personal stuff and whatever. And so that's really, again, a good way of decluttering the internet. And now I don't have to use Firefox and, you know, Chrome and, you know, uh, something else just to try to have three different accounts open for three different things. I can do that all with inside of Arc. Now, for those of you that work on very wide monitors, sometimes just having, you know, one web page occupying all of your real estate is not the best thing. Maybe you want two or three side by side. And Arc has a split view. So we can do that by going to Command T and let's just type in split, add split view. And now I can add in a second. Uh, let's type in, you know, GitHub here again. And now you can see that my screen is split into two with the Wikipedia article and the GitHub stuff now side by side. Not so I'm using my Mac uh, Book Air here, so it, it works actually quite nice. But imagine if you had a really nice wide monitor, then that's another great way. So again, if you are doing Gmail and YouTube and Twitter and uh, whatever it is that you're using, you can have them all up side by side. So again, another great way of decluttering the internet. Now, another feature built into Arc is a note-taking tool which you can actually create notes and then share them directly on the internet. So again, if we get down into the sidebar and we click on this plus sign, we can say add a new note. And it's basically a very simple, this is a demo note. Uh, so is this a good tool for you, question mark? And then we can, you know, uh, add in, I think we can add in, uh, we can turn things into part of a bullet list. Yes, we can like that. And we get down to the next one and we can add in part of a bullet list. Uh, in fact, I think we need to do it like that. There you go. Item two, item three, and you can do all kinds of things. And then when you want to down here, you can click and you can say it's a private note, only I can see it or anyone can view. And then we just copy the link. Okay, and now if I go into, and I'm reading it inside of Arc itself, but that's actually the version I've got to using a, a, a URL. So only people with the URL can access it. Of course, that's not a very gr fine grained way of doing, um, you know, uh, you know, authentication and sharing. Now, one of the ways that Arc may make money is by having a kind of a free for personal use version, and then kind of having a Teams version or a business version, which may offer more features. For example, let's say you could share the notes only inside of your organization. You can have collaboration. These are things that Arc are working on, but they've got these tools. And certainly this is the good basis for having, you know, teamwork stuff when you're all using the Arc browser, it kind of becomes the Arc ecosystem at that point. 
In fact, there's a more powerful version of notes, which is called an easel, which actually allows you to kind of do annotations and drawing and pictures. So for example, if I go over here to the sidebar, there's a little camera button here, I can capture a portion of a web page. So here's, I'm gonna capture this portion about easel. Okay, and I'm going to send it to a new easel. And here it is, here is like, you know, a canvas really that you can just paint on and do whatever you want. So we can add some text. This is some text, you know, I can add in, you know, an arrow to show something, change its color. I can actually do free form drawing kind of thing. And now I'm creating this canvas, which can include so many different things. So if I go back to uh, another web page, for example, let's grab a picture of that picture of that, uh, bird there and I can add it automatically to my easel that one I was editing okay and it's now here I can add it in uh, and play with it however I want and again like the other stuff you can share it uh, now you can have it for viewing you can have it for editing if someone has a copy of the URL and again I imagine though I don't know this for sure, if they're gonna do a kind of a Teams version of Arc, then there's gonna be more fine-grained sharing, so it's just shared within people in the team or shared with people you've given an invite to or something like that. Now, one worry I had about the notes and uh, easel features was because they're created locally here on your Mac, not up in the cloud, what happens if your Mac gets damaged? What happens if the hard drive fails? Where are all of your notes and easels going to be? And the good news is, is there is some iCloud synchronization. So if you log into another Mac, using the same iCloud credentials and the same ARC username and password, then actually you get access to all of the same easels and uh, notes that you have created because they get synced via iCloud. How robust that is, how that scales up, I don't know. But in my simple testing, I was able to get another Mac, log in with the same credentials, and I had access to the same uh, notes and features, even the ones that remain private uh, on, my, on my laptop. Another worry I do have about notes and features is what happens if someone creates a kind of an easel with illegal content or a note with illegal content and then shares that around and then how are ARC responsible for that? Because it does get uploaded to ARC.net. Uh, that URL that I actually copied earlier was one on the ARC website. Uh, so that will be interesting to see how they handle that when that problem appears. Now, while all this stuff is great and in one sense almost revolutionary, having that sidebar spaces, uh, profiles, okay, there are a few things that aren't too good. Now, the main one is bookmarks. Now, when you install Arc, it can say, do you want to import your bookmarks? Now, I use bookmarks as kind of a dump for all the URLs that I need. Let me give you an example. I fill out my tax form, you know, once a year. There's a URL I need to use. I don't remember what that URL is, but it's in my bookmark. And then I don't need to go, I just go and open it and start searching for, you know, taxes or whatever, and that will be the first thing that comes up in the address bar, and I go to it. Now, there isn't actually a bookmark system per se inside of Arc. What you get is folders and URLs saved inside of folders, which could be okay again, because with inside of the command bar, you could probably find it quite quickly. But the problem is when you open up a page that you've got saved in a folder, it appears not on the uh, the tabs where you can access them quickly, it appears inside of the folder. Let, let me give you a demo to show you what I'm talking about. So here I've got some imported bookmarks. And let's say I wanted to go to Yahoo Finance. Well, there it is, there's the Yahoo Finance page coming up, absolutely no problem at all. But it's actually inside here, it, here's the tab. It's not down here, it's not below the, the other stuff in the folder, it's inside the folder. So now if I've got that folder closed, as you can see, I can't see. The, the, the tab. Now, I, when I imported all my bookmarks, I've got hundreds and hundreds of them and lots of nested folders. And I would start opening things. I was like, how do I get back to that page I was just on? Now, one workaround is, of course, you could reorganize your bookmarks, but that's a big investment that I'm not really prepared to make at the moment. But there is a way of switching quickly between uh, different tabs. And you do that by pressing Control and Tab. And this allows you to switch between the tabs that are inside of Arc, not inside of Mac OS itself but inside of Arc. So I can go back to that Yahoo Finance or back to GitHub or whatever. So that does uh, work, but it's not really a good idea. Having these things inside of these uh, bookmarks is not good. And as you see, it just keeps expanding it there because it's, it's, an open, it's an open page. So I think that needs some work. And another thing I found is that when I'm downloading big files, I can't find the current status of the download. Maybe I can't find it 
which means at least at the worst case problem, it's the fact that it's just obscure. I don't know where it is, but actually I've hunted around and while I'm waiting for, let's say, a download that might take 20 minutes or something, I just can't see it. I don't know where it is. I don't know its progress. Has it stalled? Is it still working? So that's, again, something I think they need to work on. So what are my conclusions? Well, it's currently in beta and it's currently limited only to Mac OS. So if you have a Mac, I would recommend you try to get hold of an invite. Now, as I'm saying that, I will be posting for the next few days, I think I've got four or five invites left that I can use. I will be posting those on my YouTube channel as a post. So do make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you wanna get hold of an invite. I've only got four or five, I can't give away more than that. If you're lucky enough to get one, then do tell me what you find out about Arc when you use it. So if you have a Mac, try to use it. You may find that if you are only using a Mac, you don't use Windows, you don't use much browsing on the web browser, or you don't care that it's not synchronized with the web browser on your mobile, then you may find you want to switch to using Arc straight away. For the majority of people, people like me, I use Windows and Mac and Linux, I use Android, and I need really, if I'm going to invest in this Arc ecosystem with the note-taking and the easels and the and the bookmarks and, the, and all that kind of stuff, then really I'm going to need it across all of my platforms so that I get a more of a seamless experience. Okay, well do give it a go and do tell me in the comments below what you think about it.